So what is Canada prepared to do about that provision? Kirsten Hillman is Canada's ambassador to the United States. She is in Washington. Uh, ambassador Hillman, thank you very much for speaking with us today. Um, what can and what is Canada doing about that tax credit provision that could really potentially hurt the Canadian auto industry? Thanks, Katie, and thanks for having me tonight. Um, so I think, you know, the, the, the answer to that is it's important to emphasize that this is a draft text, this is a draft bill that has been uh, put out today. So we have been talking to lawmakers on the Hill and we have been talking to the administration, the White House and, and members of, of Cabinet, and we have been underlining the facts around our deeply integrated supply chains and in this case in particular are deeply integrated auto supply chains we really have three messages for them first given these deeply integrated supply chains um, that create jobs on both sides of the border this kind of disruption to our ability to move our products and the parts in those products back and forth with ease will cost jobs will cost jobs here in the united states I think the second thing that you know that we're emphasizing is is that this is really running up against the commitments that the United States just made as we renegotiated the NAFTA. And one of the big ambitions in the NAFTA, one of the things we were really proud of, was positioning our auto sector with the U.S. auto sector for the future, for the future of electric vehicles, for the vehicles that will be you know in demand all around the world. So putting us in the best possible competitive position by emphasizing our, uh, our ability to work together and to sort of raise each other up in, in this sector. And thirdly, you know, it's inconsistent with the, the deep mutual commitment that Canada and the United States have to fighting climate change and part of that fight is the electrification of the transportation sector. So these are the kinds of things we're saying. We're bringing a lot of facts to the table to, to talk to them about this. We're emphasizing that you know trade's not a zero-sum game. It's not a question of winners and losers. When we have mutually supportive sectors like our auto sector, then working together creates jobs on both sides of the border. Breaking down those supply chains loses jobs on both sides of the border. So you're, you're making those points to the people who are in charge, the decision makers. Um, if they go ahead with, you said it's a draft text right now, but if they go ahead, if this bill passes, what will Canada do? Yeah, you know, I think it's too soon to talk about that. We've got some time ahead of us. The whole reason that the bill was put out today was to allow um, members of Congress to discuss it, to look at the provisions. It's well over 2,000 pages long. Um, this is one slice of, of this entire project, as, as was said earlier in your show, that is in, incredibly comprehensive package of social spending. So there's a lot on the table. And there's a, the process is now underway for debate and discussion about the different elements. And we will be there very actively um, making our case uh, with respect to, to this tax credit. Um, have you received any signals from anyone within the, the Biden administration or anyone on Capitol Hill that they're, they're receptive to Canada's concerns and they might be willing to budge on this? Well, I think what I can say is they, they are hearing us. Um, and we, but we're not finished our, our work, right? We, we've been through this before by America provisions are not new. Um, Canada has had to make our case with respect to essentially, you know, essentially our, our point of view, our argument, but it's borne out by the facts is that the, the concept is that by America provisions create jobs and incentivize jobs in the United States. And, you know, I won't comment on whether that's true with respect to relationships the U.S. might have with other countries. But what I know for a fact is that those kinds of protectionist provisions, when applied to Canada, rather than creating jobs, they create significant disruptions, they harm companies, they diminish our competitiveness as, as countries, and they diminish U.S. competitiveness, and they, and they lose jobs, they risk jobs. So we will continue, as I said, we've, we've gone down this, you know, this road before, and we've, made, we've been very effective in making our case before, and we'll continue to do that here. At the end of the day, the reason we're having this conversation is because there's concerns that Canadian jobs could be lost if this goes ahead. If you're a Canadian auto worker watching this right now, should you be worried? Um, you know, I, what I can say is that, that Canada, um, our government, but, you know, 
our whole country, whether it's the provinces, whether it's provincial representatives, whether it's the industry, we are going to come at this with a Team Canada approach. So we are going to bring to bear the same kind of approach that we did when we were renegotiating the NAFTA. And it worked, right? We need to sing with the same, from the same song sheet or with the same voice uh, in order to bring all of our arguments to bear. We have an enormous number of allies in the United States and many different Canadians have many different allies. So we need to bring all of those allies, you know, in, in this discussion and, uh, and make, make sure that the U.S. understands that this is this provision is not going to make sense if it's applied to Canada. Um, I want to ask you about Line 5. Earlier this month, Canada invoked a, a treaty from the 70s uh, to try and trigger some formal conversations to make sure the Line 5 pipeline does not get shut down. Uh, where Have talks started? Where do things stand? What's going on? Yeah, so we are now in the stage where there have been some initial discussions between the State Department and our Global Affairs Department officials and they are setting up the sort of the parameters for those discussions. So the discussions have not launched yet. They're sort of determining timelines and interlocutors and that sort of thing. So there's there's already a lot of there's a lot of anxiety uh, in the, with jobs related to this pipeline, and uh, the Canadian government um, has a lot of support from some of the provinces to make sure that this pipeline does not get shut down. Um, you know, is there is there a timeline at play here that this issue might be put to bed anytime soon, or is this going to be another long protracted sort of festering issue with the United States? Well. From where I sit, I'd like us to be able to put it to bed fairly soon and get back to making sure that we have certainty in our in our economic relationship and in particular in our energy security. Um, that's not completely in Canada's hands, right? So these discussions that we're having with the United States, uh, we are we are looking forward to them, um, and we are hopeful that they will help us move forward in in getting to a resolution here. Ultimately, the parties to the dispute, Enbridge and the government of Michigan, are also going to have to find a path through this as well. Um, hopefully, sooner rather than later. But as I say, uh, we're not the only we are not the only folks around the table on this. The last thing I want to ask you about is is a big picture question about your your role in Washington. You know, we're talking about these buy American provisions in this budget bill, which American protectionism is not new. This is something that every government deals with in some form or another. Uh, and then we've got this issue with line five, another sticking point. Um, when the Biden administration came into power, it uh, while there is protectionism that's by American is something that Joe Biden firmly believes in. Um, you have a like minded partner, a more like minded partner uh, sort of uh, at the at the table than you did with with Donald Trump. Uh, but you're still facing some pretty significant challenges uh, from your perspective. I know that the Biden administration has only sort of been there for a few a few months now, less than a year. Um, how, are, is it more difficult to deal with the current administration or were those challenges much larger with the previous Trump administration? You know, I think I'd answer this that question by saying this: the we, our government is deeply aligned with the Biden administration on numerous policy objectives that they have. We are also facing in Canada, as they are in the U.S. and many countries around the world, a moment in time that is very complicated: recovery economically from COVID, recovery from a health perspective from COVID, um, challenges. You know within society that need to be addressed in terms of who, who's been hardest hit by this very difficult time we've been through and, and trying to put in place a framework to, to make our countries better. And they're very much, you know, the objectives down here uh, by the Biden administration. And so they're very deeply focused on that and we support that um, and we are, are, you know, wanting to make sure that they succeed in that regard. Does that mean that we're not going to come up and have some some challenges here and there as they seek to implement those those plans? Most clearly not. But I think that the test of a good and strong relationship is that you could have disagreements, even the most serious of disagreements, but you can do so respectfully, you can move through them, you can try to to move those through those disagreements in a way that is good for both sides and that that is mutually beneficial. And you know, I'm confident that that we'll be able to work with our American friends in that regard. I, I they are they are they are grappling with a lot of challenging things within their own country, but they are sincere in their desire to also support um, their neighbors. Ambassador Hillman, thank you very much for your time today. 
My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.